Welcome back to another training session of Forgotten Hope 2. In this film, you will learn the basics of vehicle operations and deployment, as well as an introduction to mechanized combat tactics. The battlefield is populated by many armored beasts of war. Learn to tame these monsters and victory will be assured. The most common type of vehicle you will encounter on the field is the general purpose vehicle. These include unarmored transports, such as trucks or cars. Their purpose is as straightforward as getting troops from point A to point B in a hurry. Some GB vehicles have even been fitted with machine gun positions, making them effective gun platforms useful to pin down enemy infantry. Use speed to your advantage and try to avoid enemy contact as even small arms fire can ruin your day. The armored personnel carrier is a heavier troop transport that provides better small arms protection to its crew than unarmored transports and also sports a machine gun to keep marauding infantry at bay. Armored cars are nimble fighting vehicles that are perfect for hunting infantry and other light vehicles. Their high speed, combined with a powerful cannon or machine gun, makes them a lethal unit when used for infantry support or raiding attacks behind enemy lines. The tank is the backbone of any armored combat group. Heavily armed and armored, they can tackle nearly any threat presented on the battlefield. Deploy them at the spearhead of an attack to punch through enemy defenses or incorporate them into a defensive line to create formidable armored gun positions. Be careful when bringing a tank into areas with large amounts of infantry cover, such as towns or forests. Enemy troops can easily flank you and swarm your tank with anti-tank weapons. Always have infantry support when advancing into these tight areas. As you take command of a tank, you can view the battlefield from the safety of your commander's cupola. This view can be pivoted to view your surroundings by holding down the free look key. In order to accurately fire the weapons of your tank, use the fire flares key to look through the targeting optics. Most tank sites are magnified and allow shells to be fired accurately at great distances. Many tanks are issued a wide variety of ammunition types to cope with different targets. Use the switch weapons keys to change between them. Keep in mind that it will take several seconds to change shell types, so always try to have the proper ammunition loaded. Don't get caught with your knickers down. Common ammunition types include Armor piercing. These rounds are best used to defeat heavily armored targets such as enemy tanks. They produce very little splash damage and are virtually useless against infantry. High explosive. These rounds have a large blast radius and are ideal for clearing enemy troops out of buildings or trenches. However, they offer poor armor penetration and will barely scratch the paint off enemy panzers. Smoke. These shells emit a large cloud of smoke on impact and can provide valuable cover for an advance or to blind enemy positions. Some larger cannons are able to fire these specialized shells, but many tanks feature short-range smoke grenade launchers for the same purpose. Along with the lumbering vehicles of battle, you will also encounter a large collection of emplaced weapons. These defensive positions can be manned by infantry and are essential to repel an enemy attack. Should these weapons be destroyed in combat, it is important to note that they must be repaired by an engineer. Unlike other vehicles, these emplacements will not be periodically replaced. It is imperative that a strong engineer corps keeps these guns up and running, or the line will collapse. Mounted machine guns provide excellent defense against assaulting infantry and are identical to their handheld counterparts, with the exception of greater accuracy and control. To avoid incoming enemy fire, the gunner may take cover by pressing the crouch key. Anti-tank guns are the most effective way to deal with advancing enemy armor. Their low profile and small size makes them very difficult targets to hit from a distance. Be wary of flanking infantry as you can quickly become easy prey. Similarly to tank cannons, these weapons also feature gun sights and multiple ammunition types. 
Anti-aircraft guns are rapid-firing cannons designed to bring down enemy aircraft. It may take some practice before you can consistently hit the fast-moving targets, but your comrades will be quite happy when the strafing runs and the airstrike cease. The high-explosive shells fired from these guns also make them devastating when turned on enemy infantry and light vehicles. Artillery guns can be the key to smashing through an enemy's defense. Whether it be the humble mortar or the heavier 25-pounder, these guns will rain down fire upon anything unfortunate enough to be targeted by a friendly spotter. In order to coordinate an artillery strike, both an artillery gunner and a forward spotter are required. The spotter must call in the target with their binoculars by pressing the fire key. These coordinates will be radioed to the gunner, who can interpret them by aligning both dials on his gun sight to 0, zero. Fire can then be adjusted by using the alternate fire key to determine where shells are landing. Aircraft provide an important support role on the battlefield. Attack bombers can demolish ground targets with impunity and are a tanker's worst nightmare. The terrible scream of a Stuka is sometimes the last thing they will ever hear. Fighter aircraft can keep the skies clear of enemy planes and can deliver deadly strafing runs on ground targets with their powerful machine guns and cannons. Reconnaissance aircraft are small and lightly armored, but they can provide invaluable information on enemy positions which can turn the tide of a battle. Aircraft operation may require countless hours of training and practice, but the essentials are similar to the controls found in tanks. The pilot may pivot his view by using the free look key, and the gun sights can be brought up with the fire flares key. Some bombers are equipped with multiple payloads that can be changed with the switch weapons keys. In order to rearm your aircraft, you must land at a friendly airfield. It is important to note that only the pilot kit, often found on airfields, is the only kit that includes a parachute. If your plane is heavily damaged and you need to bail out, but are not equipped with a pilot kit, be prepared for a rather unpleasant landing. This concludes basic vehicle operations. Be sure to take the time to learn the wide variety of vehicles that you may confront on the battlefield. Proper identification can mean the difference between an easy kill or a confrontation with unpleasant consequences. If you have any questions or comments, please voice them to your CO at the Forgotten Hope Public Offices.